-hmm. So like they were like it was positioned to be like a cool you know, it seemed like a cool interview. Even mm -hmm. though this Justin the Boy dude seems like a bit of a combo. Like he seems like a I'd never heard of him before. I didn't like even know ever. what he does. You never heard of him? Did yeah, you know same. him? Okay. So, I mean, he he had this no. one podcast that was called, I think it was called Respectfully, because he that's what he always puts, Respectfully, comma, Justin LeBoy, like he's ending an email fucking all the time. It's weird. He's got a strange brand. And he has <laughs> this new podcast called The Download, and that was what Ye was on. So he was like, and, and I'm here with first episode of The Download with my co-host, not my guest, it's not an interview, it's my co-host, yay. The, and he's just like, and all the comments are like, the glazing is crazy. <laughs> Like he was, it was so wow. awkwardly, like he was just sucking dick, bro. It was way too much. He was like, he would ask a question. Kanye would kind of answer in his Kanye way. And then he would like, he go, ah, absolutely, absolutely. All right. So next topic. And he would just, you know what I mean? There was one question for everything. Mm. And it was so like, like, mm. like, I think he talked about the Drake stuff pretty much off the bat as far as the verse for like that because he premiered the like that verse and then he was i don't know if you saw the clips he was like he was like yo run that pull that back yeah every bar he was like woo and was okay. like okay Whatever like the right. bars no nothing on that verse yeah. deserved yeah. a woo there was no woos yeah woos undeserving so like the whole uh, interview was like you know how like we've all done multiple interviews on on here on bad habits on bos whatever you guys know how interviews go like mm -hmm. You ask follow-up questions. You mm -hmm. acknowledge what they're saying. Sometimes repeat it back to them and ask a deeper question or something thoughtful about their whatever it is. It was none of that. It, it almost felt like he was like he had a list of questions. He'd ask that. Whatever he said, be like, cool, cool. And multiple times during the interview, Kanye said something like, I am a god. Like, I am god. Like, you know, the usual shit. He was yeah, on yeah, yeah. that kind of... He was mostly yeah, cool, yeah. but he did that a few times, which obviously I don't really know if anyone's a fan of that. And he he said to him, he was like, mm -hmm. oh, every time I say I'm a god, you kind of like laugh it off and like, you know, be a bit awkward. So make you feel awkward, like, you know, when I say it. And he's just like, and all he did was laugh it off at the end and just said absolutely. He kept saying absolutely all the time. And that's what he said. And then continued on. I'm like, this is wow. so fucking awkward. I don't know what he does for Kanye. Like he, he was a part of the, the crew or Yeezy. I don't know what. I don't know if you guys remember during the Donda stuff. It was like he was the one uh, tweeting on behalf of Kanye and stuff type of thing oh. from his accounts. Like, as in he was in charge of the oh, I didn't know that. That's the weird. messaging of, of some sort. So it was done as a download that if you bought something on Yeezy.com that day, you would get a download to watch it. But I just YouTubed it and someone had ripped it because I think it was paywalled and put it up. So I watched. I sent it to uh, you guys. Of course. Uh, it wasn't worth you guys even spending the time to watch it. So you didn't miss anything, but it was just right. fucking so, weird. Yeah. Really weird. Really awkward. Like, yeah, not, not really worth. I was hoping cause he hasn't had an interview in a while. So I was like, okay, he's sitting down with his dude. Who's his friend. Maybe he'll say some more yeah, real right. shit. Like I can't even give you one real takeaway. The main thing though, that I, I wrote down from it was that vultures two is dropping May 3rd, apparently. And we are recording this April 30th. Mm -hmm. So that would be Friday, May 3rd. Uh, oh, that's good. Obviously, we can uh, you know not hold our breaths based on the past <clears throat> uh, situation, but um, yeah, man, it was it was just like it was just strange. It wasn't the uh, it wasn't the greatest interview. So uh, yes, I wanted to just update you all on that. So a rush job, mate. Yeah, just just weak cunts, man. I don't fucking know. So well, I guess there's no point following that dude because that shit was weak as fuck. But uh, the big, big, big news yeah. today, after what I believe was about three weeks <clears throat> since the original <clears throat> Jesus l leak, because Drake didn't claim push-ups for seven days, as he we all know, it without as we claim all have it. agreed on that he didn't Unless claim it for a week. Unless you're super thick, he claimed it, but <laughs> but it's okay. It's, it's okay. okay. So he claimed it a week when he finally released it, wow. and he. So I think from the original week before that. It had been about three weeks. Today, Kendrick finally dropped. He finally dropped his response to, I guess, the first uh, diss track, the push-ups. And, uh, mate, we're going to do a full lyrical breakdown, but before mm -hmm. we do that, we'll get into a few other things. It was um, it was great. It's a great day for hip-hop. Mm -hmm. The internet was ablaze today. 
Nice. You know, Quite timely. So thanks, uh, Mr. Good. Kenneth. Mm. 11.30 a.m. on a Tuesday. Yeah, it was, uh, it was 8.24 in yeah. L.A., which means 8 for, like, Kobe, like, the 8.24 a.m., so Kobe, uh, both the numbers he had, um, because he had Ooh, the Kobe okay. face shift on the heart, mm -hmm. part five, and then Kobe said he, he they did an interview one time together, and Kobe was saying, I'm, I feel like I'm the Kendrick Lamar of basketball type shit. Mm. So, and it's um, also the fact that Drake said, you're not Kobe Bryant to us. That's that too. Yeah. So little small things like that make it like, uh, mm. and there was two other fun things today on the day it dropped. One was like, uh, someone put this, it was Hitler's death day, I believe, and mm. anniversary of his death in like 1945 or something. And Hitler didn't like Jews and Drake is half Jewish. Mm. So could be a jab there. And there was another, I think it was national like childhood day or something That's like fun. that being that drake has been accused of liking young girls so mm -hmm. there's a few little things like that and we're going to do the full breakdown because the internet is insane and they've already had oh, yeah. annotations like links everything on every single bar of the song and it was a six minute song no hook well, kind of a little bit of a hook in the end that he repeated a At couple times it's kind of like only two things were really repeated i guess so. yeah so it wasn't like super crazy mm -hmm. but um so that was fire but we're going to do a couple quick things first um no so i got i gotta begin you know what maybe we'll do a couple things and then we normally would have like a beginning question and my question for the day was like who's winning the rap civil war and what's the best track and we were gonna look i got a little graphic on that i was gonna show but maybe we'll do the project review and the buyer of the day which notion's taking care of today since dan is sitting next to me and would see the answer um so maybe we'll do that after mm -hmm. uh, maybe after we review kendrick stuff actually because that might be better yeah. Okay. So it's not really a beginning question now, is it? Well, um, I also have a tier list. You have a tier um, list? Mm. Unfortunately, there is no Drake versus Kendrick oh, that tier list, great. but there's a <clears throat> Drake, Kendrick, Cole tier list. That's we fun. can ignore Cole. The whole debate I'm seeing online right now is, does, does Drake have classic albums? Does Kendrick have classic albums? So I guess we can settle that on this podcast today. Cool. We don't need to involve Cole because he released a diss track and said sorry 24 hours <laughs> later. So let's uh, let's just ignore him in this list. So we off that. Yes. We off that. Yes. Okay. Beautiful. So we can definitely do that one. So then let's do the bar of the day from Notion. And I imagine that I probably wouldn't be participating. I'll be like, just like you don't participate when I do it because you'll know it. Oh, I'm... Um, well, if I know it, I don't participate. But if you don't know it, then play along. But cool. like, mm -hmm. if you don't, you would that makes probably sense. know some part of it. Okay, you're not fucking right. I won't. I won't ruin it. Uh, if I really okay, know so, it, I still won't ruin it. Just dive, dive in or what? Yeah, dive, dive in, brother. Dive in, mate. Okay, sweet. So don't tell us anything so, about the rapper. I got that detox for y'all. Okay, I won't. I got that detox for y'all. The microphone, Doctor Black, Deepak Chopra. That's how he says it in the thing. I'm a griot to make you want to peacock your arm. Every dignitary paying me top regards, boy. I'm three optics far from your binoculars. So, so that smart money finna get the heat out your car. You're on K. Dot Lamar meets Tupac Shakur. Got pro pro profile bar for you cops. Too hot to charge. Listen, and then it continues okay. on, but. I'd, by the flow, I got a guess, but I'm not going to say it yet. Uh, ha, ha, ha. <clears throat> the flow, I'm thinking, yeah, but it's not yeah. I tried to read it in the same way the rapper does it. Yeah, mm. so you did it different to me. Also, no, by the way, your video and audio are not matching again like last week, so I don't know what's going on. Could be the internet you said was fucking up. Mm. There's nothing you can do. It's fine. That's all good. All right, Dan. But I'm thinking yeah from the flow. But I feel like I would know it if it was, yeah. I feel like I know that Tupac, Shakur, and Kendrick Lamar bar. Mm. I feel like I know that. I'm going to say yay first, but I kind of don't think it's yay. Yeah, you, you should know it. You have heard it before. It's not yay. But not you yay. have heard the song before. Mm -hmm. and uh, with yeah. You know, you know it, right? I don't know the song, but I you think know I know the rapper based on the flow alone. The okay. bars sound familiar, but... Okay. Yeah, I don't know them specifically. I'm saying he's definitely an East Coast rapper this time. That's correct. Okay. Okay, okay. okay. Gee, that is a delay. That's like seven seconds. <laughs> it's, uh, like, it's okay. That's a long delay, yeah. Sorry, yeah. dude. No, nothing we can do. Okay. Internet. East Coast. East Coast. Okay. Uh, what, you... uh, what year was this song released? 
uh, I would say two or three years ago now. Oh, so it's pretty new. It's That's pretty a good new. question. One second here. I have a question, but I think it'll give away potentially what it is that I don't want to spoil. Oh, 2017. 2017. It's, it's still relatively yeah, new. I'm just going to hide this from you so you can't see, so I can check something because I can check if it is what I think December it is. December 2017. December 2017. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me think about it in a more logical way. Okay, so if he's East Coast, is he from like a major city in the East Coast? Yeah, that's what I thought it was. Uh, yes. yes, he is. I can I can okay. help answer questions too now. Okay. I know what it is. You know what it is, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. So he's from a major city. Sweet. That's what I, I thought it was. I'm but... assuming he's from New York. No. He's not from New York, okay. No. He is... No. So he's from a major city, East Coast, let me think. Is he from... He's not Canadian. No. He's... Uh... No. Okay. Is, he, is this guy part of a group? Yep. Hmm. But this, but this yes. song was not part of a group thing. So it was like a solo thing. Yes. Okay. That's correct. He is does he, solo stuff as well. Is he making music right now? Yeah. Would people say he's washed? Yep. No. No, like he's very relevant. No. I would, I would say to a... Well, obviously you listen to the bars, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hip-hop, hip-hop, real hip-hop. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like to us, he is uh, up there. So it's like I the, think I know who it is. Go, is it Black Thought? Yeah. See, I is. knew it because I know I know the line hey. about that is Black mm. Thought, and the song is uh, he done a colors for that song. Close. Oh, I forgot. What Similar it's thing, but it's not a colors. Oh, is it? Uh, no, not, um, not colors. But oh, what's it called? It's, uh, it's a fucking. It's, it's, I don't know what it's called. I know what it is. A radio. It's a radio. Yes, show. it's a radio show. It's. Uh, uh, let me Google it. Uh, <laughs> Black Thought Free Stuff. up immediately. <clears throat> it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fr- fr- okay. 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 Fun the Flex fun, Freestyle. Yeah. Oh, nice. That was, that was a good one. That was a good one. Nice. Nice. See, I knew that. I knew that. I knew that. You knew. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I love that. Good one. Good choice. Yeah, we did the dissection <clears throat> on the on an episode ages ago. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Fuck that. The verse even was that seven years later. Top tier. Wow. Go tier. Um, love it. Great choice. What well I know. Uh, love that. I'm so pull back. Yeah, yeah. No worries. So this is obviously episode 161 mm-hmm. of Bad Habits Podcast. We need to build them. Mm-hmm. Um, so the next thing we'll probably do, maybe we'll do the um, the TMF Classic Project review. Yeah, let's get that out of the way. Let's get that out of the way. Do you want to just do something in real time and talk, just so I can? Go, okay, mate. Hey, go on. What's up? What's up? What's up? There you go. Oh, that's a lot so it's like it's like slowly. It looks like it slowly kind of slides out. The only downside, oh, oh, okay, no, that's fine. The only downside is um, when I, I, it's like nearly impossible for me to make a clip in the way I was doing it because I what it does every time you hang up and come back, it stops your audio, and I get a separate video file for each time, oh, and awesome. and the audio isn't synced. It would take me forever to do it. Yeah, so okay, I don't pick a clip with me in it. That was probably the that's probably the easiest probably way because last time I actually picked one from us going like this, so it was it was pretty sweet. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> worked out well. So, um, y'all might remember last week uh, we reviewed Notion's phenomenal EP from 2013. Mm-hmm. No, we didn't. We did mine, didn't no, we? It was yours. It was oh like, shit! Okay, so the week before it was last, Montreal or something. Uh, cool. Steps to the Peak was mine and Doctor Mad's uh, last episode. Episode before that was Notion's Pride of My Cufflink. So we did our 2013. Uh, projects back to back there which is dope and I sent out the TMF email if you're on our mailing list go to themoverfam.com and join up there sent that out today so just to let the people know now moving into 2014 on my birthday which is April 10th 2014 which actually this year was 10 years which I totally forgot to even post about very bad with all of those things mm-hmm. um, Same. The uh, my debut album debut solo album I guess uh, This Is All I Know dropped and uh, this is this is a banger. So got to I, I heard it recently, but Dan listened to it today, and we were at the, at the crib, so mm-hmm. heard it again. So it's always nice to hear. It's it, it's it's fuck, man. I'm really happy with it. So Josh Telfer, who basically did everything for me except Steps to the Peak um, that I've ever done, he for the most part, I think, he did the cover. This was just against the fucking wall, and now we did everything zero budget, zero budget. <laughs> And he even made like a twenty-five page PDF 
the like digital download, digital booklet that came with it, with all these photos. We went to all these places on like, did photo shoots on like Mount Mont Tremblant and like around Montreal. It was like mad cold, like February and shit. Wow. <clears throat> like a train nearly hit us and stuff. It was good times. Wow. Yeah, we're pretty G. So Josh did everything as far as front back cover. Oh, actually, if I click this, I'll show you the back cover. This was a cool shot at oh. um at Tremblant. Sick. And uh, you know, put in the first. Like, I like the way you did the stylus, like hello, like that, and then brew heads at the end, like that. It's something a bit different. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. Oh yeah, I guess I can make that big. I always forget you can do that. So yeah, the whole thing was a triangle. Funny thing, I saw people in Montreal steal this the, the upside down triangle. Obviously, it's not something I own. You invented it. I basically invented upside down triangles. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Call me Pythagoras, bitch. And uh, yeah, mm. cunts was jacking that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So, uh -huh. what are we doing? What are we doing? Can I, I was going to say, can I pull up the digital book? I guess 2014. Not. Hey, nice. 2014. Um, so, I actually did a thing for this. I even just noticed here, I say, help me chart on iTunes. So, I had, I did a, this was back because it's 2014 when, um, what's it called? Uh, iTunes where people were still buying digital files like streaming wasn't like popping then I think it existed but like no one really cared no, really. <clears throat> not then yeah. so I did a iTunes pre-order and it was the first I think maybe the last first and last time I did it but worked really well so I think I did it two weeks out and ended up it was cool watching because obviously it's now the end of April so all my Facebook memories it was all the posts leading up to it and uh, we got, it was like cool seeing it. Oh, fuck. It's in like the top 200 in Australia, in Canada, in like all genres, in hip hop. What the fuck? So in the end, uh, it ended up charting at the peak that I saw anyway, because there's no way to really find out, was number six in Canada and number wow. eight in Australia on iTunes hip hop charts for like, I can't remember for how long. Was it 48 hours? I don't know. But either way, Is this it was your pretty... most <clears throat> successful project. I, for sure. Wow. Like, sick. As far as the, as far as that, Sick. which was very cool. People were, I'd never asked anyone to buy anything. This was the first time, aside from touring, when we'd have like t-shirts and CDs mm -hmm. and stuff, I was like, yo, please, if you ever give a fuck about what we've done, you know, 10 bucks on this bitch or whatever it was, um, cop that. So it was pretty, pretty dope. I had some of these songs were originally, so when the C and Becca stuff ended, we had a bunch of beats, uh, that we ready to go. And I just took basically when we split up the group i was like all right let me take these ones i took like most of them and she took like five of them and still didn't use them <laughs> i actually i ask her about it from time to time like yo what are you doing because there's this one beat from ill mind that costs us a lot of money and she just mm. sat on us this is the one she took and she just did nothing with it so a bit of a shame but um it's what it is so the quick rundown is uh you know i use so Revelino, who is the producer and rapper on um, Soul District, he produced the first track, Hello, which was super cool with the Lionel Richie sample. Um, that one came out great. The had Sean Don from the Justice League, who's Little Brother's crew, on a, a beat by Styles Fuego. So he's the Grammy-nominated, ARI award-winning producer from Australia there. So that one, for some reason, keeps getting mad streams on Apple Music. Oh, wow. Don't know why. <clears throat> it's always at the top, oh. like in the thousands. Everything else is in the hundreds. It's crazy. Um, <clears throat> oh. so that was the C and Becca song. So she's on that. We had uh, a song called Breakaway with Emilio Rojas, who's a fucking one of my favorite rappers. That one came out really sick. It was uh, some producer who disappeared. I think his name was Trill. Could never get in touch with him again. Right. And he's based. So I've yeah. got wasted publishing because I put his name down because he didn't have APRO. He never claimed it, and because I, if I was to change it, he has to sign something. So it's like I could never change it. Well, so it's, not like it's making much money. But if something ever happened with this music, it's a lot of money wasted going to nobody. Um, I had this beat from Illmind. The next one, uh, No Conversation, with uh, featuring Aria, who is yes. our uh, roommate and um, and friend. So she killed it. That was a great joint. That was uh, for, for Tiff. And then another one that was for me and Becca, and she was on... Or was it not? No, it was for me and her. That's why she's on the hook, but she killed it. Um, song called Don't Mind Me, produced by these guys called The Insurgency. I forgot where they're from. Somewhere like you know, like the Carolinas or something different like that. They rascast a quick funny story. Tell me if I've told this on the pod before, but I was taking a shit at my job in 20, 2009 and rascast tweeted that he's looking for a British girl to sing a hook. And I was like, Hey, 
and my you know i'm in a group with a girl who's australian who could cut it and he's like cool so he sent the song he did like a reference in his like he did the reference so then she did the reference for him and recorded the song and he was like yo let me know if i can do a verse for you i'm like i actually i got a, wow. I got a joint and he did it for free <laughs> wow so, i fuck with rascas forever for Legendary. that because yeah man i bought solo nice in 1997 like a huge fan um he's such a g so uh, that was very cool of him. And my old roommate, Theo Theory, who's wrapped on our stuff, he's, he's like Raskas' biggest stand. So he was fucking amped. And he said that it was even cooler because it was a rare Raskas verse because he was talking about girls on it because it's a kind of girl song um, to a degree. Mm-hmm. And he never does that at all. Like he just does rapidly rap sort of shit. So it made it like even cooler that it was something different. So that was dope. Uh, yeah, another interlude that was also produced by that Trill guy. Um, the title track, funnily enough, the All I Know interlude was called This Is All I Know. Then I got Jonathan Emil. I was looking for a male singer. It was impossible. I swear to fucking God, I was in touch with, I want to say 12 or 13 different dudes. Pause, just in case. Uh, Pause. To get someone on a track. And it was nearly impossible, bro. It was so fucking ridiculous. Well, they weren't good enough or um i had one dude come to the crib pause who was nice. a friend of a friend and he had a wicked voice but he had nothing he, he hadn't really done a lot of music so he mm. had trouble he wasn't it wasn't easy to work with him mm. um and everyone else would either just not respond um or you know either i don't know if they anyone declined flat out i can't remember because it was a while ago but i'd met jonathan emil i heard about him when i moved to montreal and reached out and uh, he was mad cool and he because I told him the name of the album, he just did that. So I was like, okay, well, I guess this is a title track. And uh, then I just changed the other one to All I Know because I kept saying that in the <clears throat> in the in the fucking song. Um, so that came out sick. It ain't over with Hezekiah. So Hezekiah's a j- fucking champion producer, rapper, singer from Philadelphia. He is. Uh, I was talking the other day actually because yeah, well, whatever it doesn't matter. Nice. But yeah, he, he's he's such a, he's such a cool guy. He. I think I talked about it here, but he had an album in 2007 called I Predict a Riot. I loved it. I got it sent to me when I was a writer. I reached out to him, I think, on MySpace or something to want to get a beat and a verse, and he tried to charge me 800 bucks, and I was like, oh, man, because like, I was paying everyone two, three, four hundred bucks, and then he did it for me for 300 which was really kind of him. He's like, you're killing me, bro, but he hooked <laughs> me up. And um, it was funny in the end because it was if he's like cheap beats that he was trying to get rid of, and which is probably why he ended up doing it. And it already had a hook on it, but he lost the production, the files, which is something that I've talked about a lot, like producers losing mm-hmm. files. And it's got the tags on it. Like it says, has a guy on the beat or something as soon as you hear it. And that's why it's a, it shouldn't say that. <laughs> but I think it's kind of cool. It's like a cool story. You were a trendsetter before it was even an actual trend. Right? Basically, Metro wow. Boomin before, mm-hmm. before Metro. Metro you know Boomin. Mean? But done you know more mean? than Metro Boomin. Didn't yeah. just make drums. He, he didn't just make drums. Didn't exactly right. That's right. Um, we did a cool video for that when he came to Montreal. Uh, so that was dope. It had this little joint times of our lives. That was produced by Remote, who also produced on Notion's EP. And uh, that was featuring Notion and Tommy Guns, like a nice little crew, you know, little, little joint. We had, uh, <clears throat> this one's a fun story too. Rainy Days produced by PR, who also produced Young and Crazy off Notion's Big EP. Tune. Big tune. Big tune. And uh, we did a song called Rainy Days, and it's featured D-Shade, who's a legendary Montreal rapper I talked about last week. But it was originally supposed to uh, feature this rapper named Tunji, who we hung out with in LA, like smoked blunts at his career, had a barbecue there. And we met him through DJ Hyphen from Seattle. So I met Hyphen from somebody, I forgot, probably Kevin Nottingham and them. Hyphen took care of us in Seattle in 2008 when we went there. Went to LA. He's like, you need to talk to my boy Tunji. He works for, I think he works for Interscope Geffen Records. So he, we went to the, the office. He gave us fucking a bunch of vinyl and like CDs and shit. And he was, I was talking to him in the straits. So that's why in the very first line of the song, I said something like, it's like the time I first seen LA. Cause I was talking about it doesn't rain there, but it rains in Melbourne a lot. And he never ended up doing the verse, but he is now the fucking uh, CEO of Def Jam. Which is wow. fucking crazy. Oh <clears throat> I feel like we've had wow. this many, it's like, insane. we just know cunts who ended up blowing up, but we never really kept in touch with the people who ended up blowing up. So we kind mm. of, like, I don't know if we fucked up or if it's bad luck, but... Wow. Funny. But um, T-Shade killed it, and he was great, and I love that joint. Um, yeah, where it's, a, I, it's a great, great song. Yeah, it's a nice little... Uh, cool samples. I feel like the album has a cool vibe to it all, which I'm curious to hear what you guys think. I'm just talking through them real quick. Um, where I Belong with Aria. This was produced yep. by uh, Shuko from Germany, who also produced my song called um, Hazy. And this other dude called... Something had heart in the name. 
So this one was like three three verses, one about Melbourne, Toronto, and Montreal, and it got Aria to sing the hook that that I wrote, and I heard. I can't remember how it happened, but I like it came to my attention somehow. No, I got a claim on my song on YouTube, and it was because this fucking guy from Germany had the same beat, the exact beat. Oh, and I was like. I messaged Shuka and I was like, hey man, like I bought this from you, like whatever back then. I'm like, and this guy's put it out. And he's like, fuck, was it, pro- was it, he goes, was it co produced by this guy? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, that fucking guy went and double sold a bunch of the beats we did together. I'm so sorry. Wow. Can I give you a beat? So he gave me the one that ended up being hazy, which was cool. Wow. So uh, that was really generous of him. That's fucking crazy. Particularly because it wasn't his fault. So uh, he was a G. We had uh, another one produced by that Trill guy who disappeared called Really Real, which was uh, featuring Notion. We used to perform this at every show. People love this joint. These were just throwaway interlude songs. It's a great one. Yeah, it's just fun and shoot. It was, it was a hook that me and Tommy Guns wrote, like, after a show or something, because it's yeah. so dumb. And I was like, we could use it. And then me and you end up using it, and it turned out perfect. So um, that was cool. I had... Yeah, man. I, I was really surprised. People, like another friend lost his mind over the All I Know interlude. I don't think it was anything special at all. And he's like, oh, man, I wish it was longer. I'm like, oh, okay, sure. <laughs> it's funny what people like. Um, Interesting. You, never, you can never pick it. Ellie. Shout That's out to cool. Ellie. Um, so that one was dope. Nice. Had another joint, Never Be Peace, with uh, the homie Germicide from Atlanta. I forgot who produced this one. Do you have the producer credit on Genius? Wait, oh, yeah. Do I have? Oh, I would definitely have the producer yeah. credit on Genius. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, it was, it was just a banger. Uh, Germicide killed it. Uh, that one slaps. We had uh, a Notion beat on this. This was the first Notion beat, I guess, on my projects. Uh, no, it wasn't because you did some CM Baker stuff. Whatever. It was the first solo stuff. Wait, was um, Never Be Peace produced by the Insurgency guys? No, that it was, was produced by Kid 8. Kid 8. There you go. Oh, so, fuck off. I bought a couple of beats off that cunt too. Yes. Uh, uh, we're going to talk about that on Heart of My Sleeve. We had a uh, joint. Was it something inside? It's for Kid 8. Yep. And um, Kid A did the TMF logo, which is dope, and the Notion logo. Oh, mm. so the Notion um, logo, yeah. yeah, he was like driving. He was like nineteen, driving a BMW off doing mixtape covers. It's crazy. Wow, Audi, yeah, a bright orange Audi. Oh, was it Audi? I thought I saw him do a B. Maybe he got a B me later because he was doing Sky Zoo mixtape covers. Like he was, maybe he had both. Yeah, he <laughs> probably did. Fuck, he was he making was, money. Yeah, he was cake. He's still around yeah. too. Which is, uh, I, th- I don't know if he does beats anymore. I think he just does the, the artwork. Yeah. So we had that song with Ill Vibe and Notion. Design, yeah. Only design? Okay, that makes sense. And uh, of course, finish off with Brewheads produced by Dr. Mad, which was uh, super cool, tied into the other projects. So lots of ties into the other projects, which I like. And that ended up being, uh, from what I understand, it's the world's first craft beer like anthem that's really, really about craft beer. Everyone's done fucking beer songs, but like no one had talked about fucking old grain and home brews and stuff like that. Like no one had th- done any of the shit that I believe this was written in 2013, came out in 2014. We had a big launch for the music video at a brewery in Montreal. And uh, now that's the theme song for our other podcast, which is great and still gets love to this day. We did a fun video. And, it is uh, the world's first craft beer yeah um, well you know what no one's uh pushed back on we're, we're trademarking there that, that is it i could actually that is it i think i might do it no one can say anything nobody no one can it's over t-shirt so it's try real. it it's real. Shit. oh i fucking should oh, probably could mm-hmm. feel a designer mm-hmm. so with that so that was my quick rundown on the album very proud of this album it means a lot to me one because it did you know significantly well as far as like the performances probably did someone go what's the best thing you did in your music uh, that would probably be up there along with a few of, you know, opening for most deaf and a few things like that. And going on, you know, we did a headline solo tour, which was yeah, pretty dope it. in 2015. So those three, those, those probably three things were the biggest things I think we did. So really proud of this, you know, obviously notion mixed and mastered everything. Um, classic versus, you know, got to work with a few idols, like, you know, Raskas and shit, Emilio, big fan, Chandon, big fan, you know, um, yeah, man. What did you guys reckon? Yeah, this was sick. There's a, uh, it's a lot uh, more modern. You can tell it's it's now coming mm-hmm. into the, the the twenty tens raps, but like not just the early twenty tens where it's all transitional. It's more like what we kind of hear now from then. So it's funny is that I had all the all of the beats almost in the twenty two thousands. Oh, two thousand seven eight. Interesting. Nine. Which is funny. Because sometimes that, to me it sounds dated. This you sounds kept on so long. so long. It's really yeah. impressive. Well, that, 
we shouldn't have kept, we shouldn't have kept him that long. We should have fucking just released him, bitches. But uh, mm-hmm. anyway, keep going. Just that was just some context. So it's, it's cool to hear that that's the way people perceive it. Yeah, yeah. yeah Without you knowing like how old they were. I get you, I get you. But it's good because you also have really big fucking features on this. Yeah, which is fucking sick. So overall, this is like a solid fucking tape. It's got the world's first craft beer anthem. World's Did you know first. That? We no one can actually say it's it. It's the first otherwise. one in the this world. It's the first one ever. There's no never been another one since. Mm-hmm. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, quick, quick, quick. Nice. Oh. Ow, ow, ow. Um, my favorite song is Rainy Days. Okay. Fucking slaps. slaps. Had you heard it before today? I feel nice. like I had, but I don't know if I have. I feel Pleasure. like maybe in passing because I've heard a lot of your stuff, but like I'm not too sure if it was if before. I have. But uh, overall, yeah, the fucking, uh, this thing is fucking solid. Therefore, uh, if I could put it in the tier list, this would go in the S tier of your, of your shit. Okay. I must say. That could be fun one day to do like a, do a tier list, list of Notion and C projects, sick. like get all the covers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and I'll, I can make it in tier list. Like you can create your own one officially. So maybe we could do that and do our own ranking you of the, where we uh, feel yeah. it, it goes. You that could, could be fun. That. That's a good idea. We should do it. I don't think it'd take definitely. too long. It'd probably take me ten minutes to populate all of the yeah. the stuff. It won't take that long. I like oh, yeah. that. And wonder if we could. Okay, and then we could do singles too after that. Anyway, I like all that. Right. Nice, uh, nice, nice. Um, yeah, cool. But yeah, solid, solid shit. Honestly, Bad. good shit. Love it. Sick cunt. Mm-hmm. No, she ran that back today. Yeah, man. Um, it's great. I, I fucking <clears throat> love being a part of every second of it. It's fucking fire. Uh, yeah, the mix holds up. Pretty happy with that still. Um, I really enjoyed the the jazzy leaning hip hop production and the soulful leaning hip hop pro- production. Uh, There's a little more on that side than previous shit. Obviously, the last stuff I listened to was all the indie experiment mixtapes, but yeah, this one's got a good sound spectrum and sound scope. It's kind of warm and organic, and uh, it's got good mm. feels. The uh, feature list is stacked. Some absolute elite MCs and uh, singers on there, and it's just it's. I know it's a good vibe all around. I really love uh, rainy days, like Dan said. No conversations out of control. Um, just like hearing the Styles Fuego beats that you saved and, and pieced together in such a nice way. Like the track order sonically blends really well. So you mm. you always do good with track orders, but I really think you nailed this. Um, uh, the where I belong with Aria is disgusting. Uh, I love Really Real. Like you said, we performed that a million times. That is very fun. When I listened to the bars, when I heard my verse, I was like, oh, yeah, fuck, this has got a nice roll to it. I remember performing this and, like, nailing it, and that was a hype one to get a good response from the crowd. And then, uh, and also thankful to have a production credit on this. And, um, you know, at the time, that seemed to be the beat that fit that you wanted. And I was like, sweet. And it's just – and then, yeah, World's First Craft Beer Song. Um, I'm first. on the hook of that. And uh, – that's just sick. We got we, we got so many gang vocals of that. There's lots of my mates and our mates on that. Mm. I had I had the boys over for a barbecue and a smoke session. I'm like, yo, can you three cunts jump in here on the hook? <laughs> I had my girlfriend at the time and some other uh, female voices to balance it out. There was about 21 vocal tracks on the hook for that. Maybe even <laughs> wow. more because things some some wow. things got uh, layered more. But it was it was a whole situation. It's a great record. That's awesome. It's good to hear that. I forgot that. That's uh, that's pretty sick. Yeah, a lot of work, and it's like it's cool. I feel like all of the, these projects keep like positioning where we were to go with it. I feel like we didn't stray too far. We still, it's all the projects are, are still quite different, but like carry this ethos through it that's consistent, which is cool. Which was the intention of listening to this shit because I wanted to see, yeah. I don't know, get re inspired, see how the fuck we feel about like you know our music and wanting to do more because things keep coming to me lately. Um, pause. Um, which is, I'll, I'll keep that thought. But anyway, yes, I'll yeah, grab my, off my bars tab in my phone is up. lots of notes, lots okay. of bars just being written every now and again. I'll just, you know, have these strains of thought. So I've got, yeah, so many new things. And some of the bars are like, I read them back, even though I write them weeks or weeks uh, ago. I read, when I read them back now, I still get what I'm saying. And I like the I bars like a lot. So I've got uh, a plethora of lines to use to get started that's perfect yeah i feel like that's great i got a bunch of bars too but people keep asking me to do stuff things keep asking i've got i'll tell you off air it's not that it matters but like people it's nothing major it's just like someone's like yo jump on this and then i'm old producer that i worked with i checked from like uh like 
2009 2010 something like that that i did a song with was supposed to be seeing becca but she never did the hook and i said and he's from like switzerland or something hit me up i was like hey man haven't done music in 16 years do you want to do some joints just split the 50 50 publishing and put it on streaming i was like okay i'm working pretty slow right now but sure i'm just trying to say yes to everything but like slowly yes to get into it because i want to finish i haven't, we haven't finished this this is not f- finished yet so um I need to listen to all this stuff to see it's where it's at. Right. Like we're on the way, we're getting close, but like, I want to get to the end of it, to the most recent stuff and be like, after I finish listening to like relentless or whatever came out last one, be like, all right, okay. I see where we at with this. I can keep going type shit. Or I'm like, you know what? I've said enough. I just wanted to still see, but um, I like that we're both considering and y'all can download this. I'm going to put the link, obviously description, yeah. audio and video. You can uh, download and support Bandcamp will be the best stream it. If you don't want to do that, but if you want to cop, Go ahead, cop that off uh, Bandcamp like a sick cunt. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Now, where do I we believe. go? F- where do we go from here, boys? Oh, yeah. Should we do the... Okay, let, maybe we go straight to the Kendrick Lamar list disc breakdown because that's pretty important. Yes. Yeah, okay. That is fucking important. Once again. All right, back mm-hmm. to screen share. So, mm-hmm. today, uh, April 30th, Kendrick Lamar dropped his uh, response to Drake's own push-ups called Euphoria. The first thing I guess about the title of the song, which we can look at here, they're saying that um, it's referring to the you know the high school drama Euphoria, which Drake is an executive producer of, and also you know allegations that he groomed teenage girls, and because there was some child Ooh. things mm-hmm. in that uh, I don't want to say the word in case, but uh, in that um, in that in that uh, show, so that was where that came from. So I'm just going to do the same thing like we did last time and just sort of read the bars. And then if we want to click on the meeting, we can do that. So starts off very interesting. There's probably what? Like, Cause yeah, separate verse and part two verse. Mm. That's pretty long. And then another verse. I think there was therefore there's probably suggesting there's at least three beat switches or three different beats. So two switches, three different beats. So it starts off like mad slow, kind of like it had like no drums or very light drums or something. And it was almost like he was like just talking and then it went into some serious stuff, and it was like, like, yeah. So he says, them superpowers getting neutralized, I can only watch in silence. The mm. famous actor we once knew is looking paranoid and now spiraling. Now, I guess that's a, ref- a reference to Taylor Maid. Um, paranoid. Oh, probably because of what happened mm. to him to, to, with Pusher, let's say here. Okay. Uh, you moving like... You move it just like a degenerate. Every antic is feeling distasteful. I calculate you're not as calculated. I can even predict your angle. I don't know what they thought. Oh, okay. They got like math fucking graphs on this oh and shit. Oh my God. They need to relax. Wow. There's no way that this happened today. They Honestly, this has to be label stuff to... <laughs> to, to, to there's no insane. chance. Are you fucking... Are you crazy? That is crazy. I, I need, okay, I'm not going to go too much there. All right. Um, Maybe they're up all night like some academic shit. That's that's a bit... But it was it dropped at 8.24 a.m. West Coast time today. So that means... I bet this was... It just it can't Has possibly... Be up, bro. Well, it does say song by or written by 13 contributors. Shit. Oh. So maybe it is real, motherfuckers. But I wonder what else they do. All right. Anyway, this is interesting. Uh, 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 fabricating stories on the family front because you heard Mr. Morale. A pathetic master mistulate, mi- master manipulator. I can smell the tales on you now. Um, oh, probably because he's saying about the wife. Um, yeah, it's talking doing about that. The, the wife cheating yeah. allegations. You're not a rap artist. You were a scam artist with the hopes of being accepted. Tommy Hilfiger stood out, but FUBU never been in your collection, I guess, because Tommy Hilfiger yeah. was a racist, said he didn't want black people to wear his gear. <laughs> And therefore, he's not actually wearing black-owned brands yeah. like FUBU. Um, I make music that electrify him. You make music that pacify him. I can double down on that line, but spare you this time. That's random acts of kindness. Hmm. So that... Okay, that's probably just saying, like, you know, Drake's music being meaningless or repetitive, which is kind of boring, and Kendrick shit gets people excited. Uh, and pacify him. Pacify his minors, because he's trying to say he's fucking kids. Okay. Uh, no, you're a master manipulator and habitual liar too. Don't tell no lie about me and I won't tell truth, truth about, about you. you. That's a bar. Oof. Um, cause he said that's a part from the, the, the heart part four, which I didn't know. And, um, I guess cause he's saying truth is, you know, it's actually more dangerous to 
because Drake's got stuff to hide. Maybe is what he's saying. Mm, mm, mm. I don't know why it's got like a because there's the intro shoo 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 oh, okay. b b b. I don't know. So like I guess he's saying gunshots sounds. Hmm. Okay. Sure. Sure. sure okay. Thing. Whatever. Uh, okay. The next verse. It's like yeah, I'm out the way. Weird. Yeah, I'm low. Okay. Yeah, the island's right. The island right here is remote. Okay. Uh, oh, maybe saying that like Kendrick lives on an island, does his own thing. I would have thought that he's doing. Um, he's talking about like Drake on Epstein's island or something like that. But okay. Oh. Uh, like competitively on an Ooh, island wow. of his own. I, I thought that was like Kendrick on his own little. Yeah, same. I thought that's what it meant. That okay, interesting. Well, that that's what you just said is what this says. So that's mm. that's fine. Y'all, y'all are probably right. Uh, I ain't think about no reaper, dude. I'm reaping what I sow. Okay. I guess he's saying this is what he probably started it, and this is what he sowed, so this is what he comes back to. Mm-hmm. Also, Grim Reaper, okay, he's going to kill him. Uh, got a Benjamin and a Jackson all in my house like I'm Joe, okay? I imagine that means he's got money in his house, and but also presidents like Joe Biden in the White House. That would be my guess. Yeah, cool. That was what it says there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hellcat made his homeboys and them types sell their soul, Okay. Double entendre between the Dodge Hellcat car. People selling their soul. Okay. Uh, uh, young people join the military. They get those same type of thing. Reference to a theme of rappers. Athletes and people buying Hellcats with their new I money. I thought Hellcat was a person. It looks like it's a car. It's a car. I don't know. Okay. Uh, it's a cunt's name. Yeah, fair enough. Everybody want to be a demon till they get chipped by your throwaway. <clears throat> Which I guess... Oh, when he's like, "This is an a, this is an a, everything I know." Don't wake the demon up from the last joint. Okay, sure. Uh, and I might do a show a day, once a lame, always a lame. Mm. Oh, you thought the money, the power, and the fame would make you go away? Have you ever played? Have you ever? Okay, let's play. Have you ever walked your enemy down like with a poker face? Okay, I think. Okay. Oh, the money, power, fame, because he mentioned that money, power, respect in the last thing. Hmm. Um, I don't know what the game is hmm. saying. Oh, maybe because Drake's done worse things, so you could play that game with bad and say, should, hey, have you ever fucked a teenage girl? And then Drake would have to say yes. <laughs> uh, have you ever walked your enemy down? I said that, the poker face. Mm-hmm. Did I say that? Yeah, you just I did. said that, but you didn't read down the station. Oh, I didn't read down the that's why. Um, is he, oh, Drake... Uh, okay, there's so much, man. Fucking, this is so intense. Mm-hmm. I don't even know. I don't even know if this really is that serious. I don't know, but so about street credibility, whatever. Yeah. Uh, have you ever paid 500? Why does it keep doing that when I click out of that bitch? Fuck you, you little bitch ass bitch. Um, have you ever paid 500 thou to mm-hmm. li- like to open a case? Oh, because he paid 500k to a woman who claimed he sexually assaulted it. Well, that's fine. Uh, well, I have, and I failed at both. Oh, he Ooh. paid money too. Oh. I mean, he missed the enemy when he walked him down and lost the case. Okay. I don't know. But I came out straight. Does that mean he's saying he came out with a straight? Oh, he came out with a win. Okay. Uh, I hate when a rapper talk about guns and somebody die. They turn into nuns and hop online like pray for my city. He faking for likes and digital hugs. His daddy a killer. He want to be junior. They must have forgot the shit that they done. Drake being hypocrisy. Yeah, because he's done a bunch of like gun stuff, which is always mm. like nobody likes that when he does that. Uh, and the dad. Oh, Birdman is Drake dad. Okay, I would have thought he meant his real dad. Okay, sure. Dementia must run in his family, but let it get shaky. I'll park his son. The very first time I shot me a Drake, the homie had oh. told me to aim it this way. I didn't point down enough. Today I'll show you I learned from, from those mistakes. mistakes. That's a buff. Oof. Uh, so that means they're saying his last the, like positive. that verse wasn't direct to the head enough mm-hmm. so now he's gonna do it better somebody told me you got a ring on god I'm ready to double the wage because he purchased a ring owned by Puck oh he did yeah he I did didn't know that. yeah oh he said double and pay more to it okay I'd rather do that than let a Canadian dude make Puck turn in his grave I guess because he's <laughs> referring to the Taylor made freestyle mm-hmm. sure and uh, then, oh, AI that was either th- the AI yeah. thing. And I was going to say the Tupac's estate is suing Drake for the use of it. Mm. Funny thing, I read a whole other, I should have kept it for this, but apparently Tupac's estate is owned by a white family. Like they, they yeah, fucked his whole that. family out of 
and either money. It's crazy. So, yeah. Some complicated. That. You saw that? Locked. It's crazy, man. So, I mean, that's that's pretty sad. Uh, cutthroat business. You got shit twisted. What is it? The braids? That's funny. So, I guess he's got the the braids. I don't think there's really much else. Okay. Uh, I hurt your feelings. You don't want to work with me no more. Okay. And this was... Probably from the control verse back in the day. Okay. Whatever. Y'all, y'all probably might need to read all this because honestly we'll be here for fucking three hours if we've got to read all these annotations. Um, It's three goats left and I've seen two of them kissing and hugging on stage. So I guess he's talking about, about Jake yeah. Cole and Kendrick doing a tour together. And, I mean, and Drake, yeah. And Drake yep. doing a tour together. So I love him hot. to death in a bars. I'll explain that phrase. Huh? It's nothing nobody can tell me, huh? I don't want to... Okay, I'll explain... Oh, setting up the YMW Melly. That's why I'm loving. Oh, I love him to death. Si- oh, we'll, that we'll is get to incredible. that. That's actually okay. way better than I thought. Wow. See, this is why it took. What was that? Get this picture of you and Notion. Oh, because I'm bumping stuff. Big up Notion falling off the top there. Can you scroll down? I can't see what the, the annotation oh. is on the side. Oh, sorry, man. I'm, I should be looking from here. Here you go. Can you see that? There we go. Yeah. Um. Yep. Okay, I'll try and keep it about there in the screen. Uh, I don't want to talk on no celly, huh? I, you know I got language barriers, huh? So that means he can't communicate with Drake because I guess they have a they don't speak the same language or something. Um, hmm. And release a promotional video. Yeah. Oh, God, this is so intense. I can't. There's a lot. Um, it's not... It's no ac- accent you can sell me. Maybe because it's saying about Drake always using changing the accents all the time in the different mm-hmm. songs. Uh, yeah, Cole and Aubrey know I'm a selfish dude. The crown is heavy, huh? And this is the real works. I guess he said the last one. He has the, the yeah. crown or whatever. And then um, I pray they my real friends. If not, I'm YNW Melly. This is insane. Are you familiar with this dude, Nosh? Oh, I've seen his, now I've seen his, his picture. Uh, yeah, yeah. In, you know the um, song uh, Murder on My do? Mind? Have a look. So he had a song called Murder on My Mind, and it was him and uh, three other yeah. dudes in their immediate crew. They're from Florida. I saw a full documentary on this. Um, he basically is in jail right now for killing his two friends. Hence, Kendrick saying, he's, you know, I'm why not, if I might have to kill my two friends, I hope they're real, you know. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I hope they're real friends because then I get to kill them because that's what they were supposed to be from this dude. So, and he did a song called Murder on My Mind, which kind of spoke about doing that, which is pretty insane mm-hmm. uh that is a bar that's fucking that's a bar bro mm-hmm. yeah well probably arguably the best Jesus one on the song. Christ. um i don't like you popping shit at pharrell for him i inherit the that, beef yeah wow well. i never noticed that on the last one uh, my, uh, oh like yeah times. he said that he bought his chains and he, he melted did down, and yeah. he was gonna melt them down yeah and that was because yeah, of the push of push it yeah I didn't know Kendrick like, and Pharrell would like chains that. that I bought from your boss. Mm. He said, I don't give a fuck about all of that heritage yeah, shit. Yeah, I remember that. Wow, wow, wow. That's okay. Sick line. Uh, yeah, fuck all that push and pee. Let me see you push a T. Obviously, oh, we know what that's referring to. Tea. You better off spinning again on him. You think about pushing Ooh, me. me. I love that. Uh, he's Terrence Thornton, which is Pusha T's real name. I'm Terrence Crawford. Yeah, I'm whooping feet. So now, uh, this is what I don't understand what that is. a professionally undisputed and undefeated boxer. He's undefeated, he's boxing. So maybe pushing, whooping feet is LA slang for beating someone up. Oh, oh. so bad they end up out of their shoes. Oh, no shit. There you go. We're oh, learning something today, boys. Wow. Wow. All right. We ain't going to get personal. This is a friendly okay, fit. Wow. Right? Um... We ain't going to get personal. This is a friendly fade. You should keep it that way. So maybe that's him say talking about his wife or whatever the fuck. Um, I know some shit about dudes that make gun or wanna look like a saint. Yeah, that's a sick line. Uh, would I guess because they calling him a snitch, the snitch or whatever. Yeah. Oh, maybe because he knows so much. If Kendrick yeah. snitches, it's going to make Gunner look chill. He probably, mm-hmm. That was good. We could have also said 6 9 um, This ain't about critics, not about gimmicks, not about who the greatest. It's always been about love and hate. Now, let me say I'm the biggest hater. That's funny. Uh, oh, okay. He's saying that love and hate on a DJ Khaled song. Holy key. I remember that joint. I hate the way. Okay. Now, this is a, re- a reference to DMX on um, uh, what's this called? Breakfast Club. Mm-hmm. I hate the way that you walk, the way that you talk. I hate the way that you dress. I hate the way that you sneak this. If I catch flight, it's, it's going to be, be direct, direct, which is pretty cool. Um, we hate the bitches you fuck because they confuse themselves with real women. 
Oh, there's multiple interpretations here. Whoa. Big <sighs> line. Big line. Wow. Uh, I Once again, th- this is a fucking, these are essays, my guy. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, and notice I say we, it's not just me. I'm what the culture feeling. So I guess he's trying to say, you it's know, everyone else. I guess this. probably because it's won. obviously all the other people that are rocking with him. Um, how many more fairy tale stories about your life till we had enough? Yeah, because I guess he always talks about mob ties and crime when that's kind of wild. How many more black features till you finally feel that you're black enough? Oof. This is this is um the coming on the, what the Rick Ross was, uh, this was Ooh. talking about. I guess trying to and black features is a double entendre meaning the features of his face and also the features in a song, um, meaning he's working with all the the you know, black artists to co-sign him and make him feel less black white enough. maybe black enough exactly. I'm like Drake. I like Drake with the melodies. I don't like Drake when he acts tough, which is funny. Uh, you go and make a dude bring back Puff. Let me see if Chubbs really crashed something. So Chubbs is the dude they talk about. Oh, it's his bodyguard turned friend. Um, oh, and did he punch Drake in the face at, at, uh, at Live in Miami? Oh, that's hilarious. Wow, and Drake didn't place. retaliate. That's hilarious. Uh, yeah, my first one, like my last one, it's a classic, You Don't Have One, which is an interesting convo. Mm-hmm. Which I guess is, uh, what's it called? Cole said that shit on Seven Minute Drill. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I guess it's all just really going on about that. Let your core audience stomach that, then tell them where you get your abs from. Oh, that's a so sick they're saying line. that Drake had the um, the male BBL. Yeah, basically, like a surgery to do that, which is a thing. And then wow, he did not. Yeah, Are you that's a, there's huge mm-hmm. speculation. Huge speculation that you got a male B- BBL. Yeah. And said V12 is a fast one. Bow, bow, like the last one. So this is the machine that actually does it. He's actually referring to the machine. Oh my God, I didn't realize that. Yeah. That's what I thought because we have a client for our agency that's in this world. So I kind of oh. heard of some of the stuff. Headshot for the year. You better walk around like Daft Punk, I guess, because he got shot in the head. So he has to wear a uh, helmet. Wow. Which is <laughs> great. So, all right. So that's just, then the, the uh, where am I at? You're Here on... we go. Go, go down. Yeah. No, 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 up, 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 up. up again. Okay, yeah, so now it's the next beat switch, mm-hmm. which is crazy. He says, "Remember, oh, similar to like worst behavior. Oh, that's Ooh. remember. That's cool. Hey, top dog, who the fuck they remember? think they? Yeah, right. Which is one of Drake's best songs, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, who the fuck they think they're playing with? Extortion, my middle name. As soon as mm-hmm. you jump off that plane, bitch. And then that's because Drake was talking about extortion." Jumping off a plane, oh, some yeah, shit. Yeah. I'm allergic to the lame shit. Only you like being famous, <clears throat> which I guess he probably does. Uh, Yachty can't give you no swag yeah. neither. I don't give a fuck about who you hang with. Obviously, Drake's, we've talked about it here a lot. Is a Drake hanging with Yachty a lot and, um, you know, trying to get the kids to, to like him and such. Uh, I hate the way that you, back. I hate the way you walk, way you talk, I hate the way that you dress. dress. Surprised that surprised you wanted that feature request. You know that we got some shit to address. So apparently, I saw this. If it's the same thing here, they're saying there's a feature request for the soundtrack to Euphoria. Was what I heard oh, on either Twitter or Instagram. So it doesn't say that here, but that's what I heard. I even hate when you say the word and what n word. But that's just me, I guess. Some <laughs> shit just cringeworthy. It ain't going to be deep, I guess. Which is even more savage. I love that so much. This line is crazy because it's like Drake yeah. is known to be insecure. And I imagine he's, you know, obviously he is half black. So, like, you got to be real. Like, you know, he's not not black. So you can't say that. But if you are going to attack someone's insecurities, this is a great thing to to do. So it's uh, that's pretty pretty clever, and also just being like it's just cringe. I'm not trying to say anything more. I'm just saying I just think it's cringe when you say that. Um, but then mad light skin or like mixed people say that. So like I don't know. I like I don't. I see it's weird when like Fat Joe says it, which is the clip we've seen a lot today. <laughs> White Latino like, man saying it. Yeah, well, because I, I guess they're like I think he's Puerto Rican. Puerto Ricans are, like Mero says it, and Mero's like lighter than you maybe yeah but you can be a black latino but yeah, then and you can also be sure. yeah afro latino of course but then there are people like literally bad bunny is from puerto rico and he doesn't say it because he knows he's white gotcha. like he is a white puerto rican but there's such a blurred line when you come from a place where it's like you're clearly not like you're not of african descent 
because you are of South American descent and it mm. kind of blurs the line between whether or not you mm. can say it. So it's, it's, it's an interesting perspective. It's, yeah. it's very weird. <clears throat> it, it's, it's a deeper... It's funny, like, Fat, Fat Joe can say it, but J-Lo can't. It's, somebody rapped about that, didn't they, see? It's like That sounds so familiar. So familiar. Yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. It's, yeah, obviously, yeah. we can't really speak Fat on... Joe can say, oh, but J-Lo can't. Yeah, you're, you're so... Oh, fuck, who was that? Probably could find it. But the... um, Yeah, that, that's Maybe. an interesting one. <sighs> yeah. I can't remember. Maybe Nas or some. Um, we'll keep cruising here. We're nearly done. Still love when you see success. Everything with me is blessed. I guess because he's saying he's... That's a pretty interesting line. Uh, keep making me dance, waving my hand. It won't be no threat. I guess he's saying keep making good music and, you know, everything is all good. Uh, we know they call... I'm knowing they call you the boy, but where is the man? Because I ain't seen him yet. yet. Matter of fact, I ain't even bleed him yet. Can I bleed him? Bet. And this is when the beat chain you go hard. Uh, I love that. Oh, yeah, obviously, we all know what's up with that. Dre, oh, God, he got his nails painted. I can't. Sorry, dude. I, no time for men with painted nails. I'm sorry. Like, if you want that, cool, but no. I'm I sorry. like what Drake likes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, academics. Uh, all right. Wow. You know what I mean? Drake, 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 Drake. <laughs> when I see you stand by Sexy Red, I believe you see two <laughs> bad bitches. That's crazy. So you say he sees himself like a bad bitch. Uh, I believe you don't like women. Insane. It's real competition. You might pop wow. ass with him. That is so funny. I, like, I kind of just feel like this funny. Like, you don't like women. Oh, because they're saying they had the BBL surgery. Why would he have She's it? a joke. Now he is. Yeah. Like, I don't know. There's a whole bunch of stuff about misogyny and women and blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's speak on percentage. Show me a split. So I'll make sure I double back with you. So that is... Uh, with obviously the whole theme of push ups is obviously about um him owing top dog fifty percent of or something his catalog yeah yeah of all his publishing so they're saying and this next part will probably just explain it uh you were signed to a dude the signed to a dude that said he was signed to a dude to that dude mm -hmm. which is oh uh it's actually a ludicrous thing which was then referenced by Pusha T which is pretty funny because I guess Drake is signed to La to Young Money which is signed to Cash Money which is then signed to Universal so that's like three oh. layers so that's what he's talking about try cease and de try cease and desist on the like that record ho what you ain't like that record which is pretty crazy <laughs> if he did I was saying to Dan earlier that would be massive if they get a copy of the cease and desist letter and mm -hmm. actually post that which is pretty crazy um Back wow. to back, I like that record. We don't know what's up with that. I'm going to get back to that for the record, meaning I guess I'm going to get back into my real, you know, hardcore shit because that was a great diss. Why would I call around trying to get dirt on dudes? Y'all think my life is rap? That's ho shit. I got a son to raise, but I can see you don't yeah, know no, nothing about that. that. It's pretty crazy. Um, oh, Kendrick saying oh. that Dr Dr Drake and Ovio have been offering money for info on Kendrick to use in the diss track. Wow. Um... And then obviously the story of Adidon is kind of playing on that. Waking him up, know nothing about that. And tell him to pray, know nothing about that. And give him tools to walk through life like day by day, know nothing about that. Mm. I guess the whole thing is always talking about Drake wouldn't have uh, become a father properly as far as like the act of taking care of a child if Pusher didn't like, get at him. Uh, teaching him morals, integrity, discipline. Listen, man, you don't know nothing about that. Okay, that was just like the conscious stuff. Speaking the truth and consider what God's considering. You don't know nothing about that. Okay. It's it ain't twenty V one, it's one V twenty. If I gotta smack dudes that write with you. Oh, Such now I get line. it. So I didn't hear so this. many ghost writers. Yeah, because of well, ghost writers, but also like co writers. Mm, mm, mm. Um Yeah, bring them out too. I'll clean them out too. I guess that's the T I reference or something. Tell Beam that he better stay right with you. Beam is a producer who's worked with Beyonce, good friend of Bieber, gang gang, uh, and has writing credits on all the stuff. Okay. Ooh. He great needs people like him to assist him in writing. Okay. And, and name dropped him instead of Quentin Miller. Okay. And Beam's another term for laser sight and a gun. Okay. All right. Uh, am I battling a ghost or AI? Dude feeling like Joel Osteen. Funny. He was in a film called AI and my sixth sense telling me to off him. I think this is the other best line. So, Sick. 
Is he battling... Obviously, we know what the AI is referring to. Mm-hmm. Is he battling a ghost, ghost rider? Oh. Wow. So is he battling his ghost riders or an AI? Joel Osteen is um, the... There's two guys. So Joel Austin was a, actor from the movie. Co- Sense. Correct. So oh. that was that was Haley Joel Os- Osmond. Hang on, Osmond and Joel Austin. So the gotcha. names refer yeah, kind that's of, right. but they're both it refers to both. And the other guy is a pastor who um who was like who who basically tried to like he think like, ah. he worked with Kanye like one of those like scammy big pastors that's you know famous. Mm. there's Jesus I think he might have been fucking like yep. working with Bieber with all his Jesus shit too um I'm a blick dudes all in their coffin I guess I'll shoot him when they're dead uh yeah OV ho dudes is dick riders that's funny <laughs> tell them to run to America tell them run to America they imitate heritage they can't imitate this violence I guess because they're all Canadians who yeah, come to the states. Big one. Um, I think they are soft. Of course, they're Canadians. Like, it's mm. not it's a different thing. What I learned is dudes don't like the West Coast, and I'm fine with it. I'll push the line with it. Pick a dude off one at a time with it. We can be on a three-hour time difference. That's cool. Like, nice. Though this was a cool little like, mm-hmm. you know, fucking flow there. Um, yeah. And this is this is where he takes the piss out of Toronto. Yes. And just comes for everyone. And this is don't speak on the family, Crody. So Crody is D- Drake's. Uh, is it like a cat or a dog or something? He has an animal. Cat. Yeah, that's his cat's name. Yes. But it's also a Toronto slang. Okay, and it's a Toronto slang. It's a crit variation of Brody, yeah. which is from Toronto rapper Presser. Okay, I didn't know that. Um. So anyway, yeah, I can get deep in the family, Crody. Talk Fucking about me and my family. Or who Presser? Super cringe. Uh, gun. Someone gonna bleed in your family. That, yeah, he's cringe. The whole that word's cringe. I hate that. Yeah, it's. Yeah, I don't like press at all. Um, I be at this is this is another great one. I be at New Ho King eating fried rice with dip sauce and a blammy crody. Tell me your cheese and fam. We can do this right now on the camera, crody. So, New Ho King is a Toronto rest Chinese restaurant that's like, like a late night spot. I think. Um. And the cheese and fam, obviously, is mm. Toronto slang, which is pretty funny. You've done it in the accent as well. Yeah, and he said, tell me your cheese and fam, which is pretty funny. <laughs> so that's obviously... Yep. And he did it He did it right, too. Yeah. This is even funnier. He's done it really good. <laughs> um, love it. Yep. Uh, nice a, yeah. A, fuck y'all dudes. I don't trust y'all dudes. I wave one finger and thump y'all dudes like, mm, field goal, punt y'all dudes. They punk y'all dudes. Nobody never took my food. Whoever that's fucking with him, fuck you dudes and fuck the industry too. If you take it there, I'm taking it further. Psst, that's something you don't want to do. And then the end, he's like, we don't want to hear you say N-word no more. And then just stop. The <laughs> end just stop. Just, um, I don't know if there's anything else. Oh, wave one finger. Yeah, like the Dikembe. We know about that. That's great. Field goal. I don't know if that's okay. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there's any other really fun references. Um <clears throat> If you, yeah, fucking with anyone standing with him, fuck the industry. Because now Kendrick, this was, and he put this on DSPs today. It was his first, like, independent song. Like, fully yeah. independent song, which is really cool. It's weird because it didn't, it wasn't even, he didn't reference PG Lang at No, all. it didn't say it at it all. It just literally said Kendrick Lamar, like, trademark. Yeah. That's it. It was very interesting. Which is very, because he has a, apparently has a direct deal with Interscope or something now. With this, oh. Which is, so he put it out through that. And I guess that's what sort of Drake said, you don't want to wake the demon up. And on Taylor Made, he was like, you better, you know, better be crazy. We waiting on you. Mm. Um, yeah. And then now they're really playing on the, the white boy thing. Mm-hmm, like I mm-hmm. uh, think I did. So wow. that is Kendrick's uh, chat. That was actually fun. I was looking forward to this because I'd heard it, I don't know, two, three times today. But uh, that was honestly better than anything I kind of expected from Kendrick. Like, it was fucking fire. Like, yeah. wow. It's pretty sick. So it's worth then, the wait. Genuinely. It definitely was worth the wait. Um, mm-hmm. Overall, yeah. Everyone's thoughts on just the track. And then I got then the next question, which was supposed to be the beginning question, is so far, what's your face? So you know what, yeah. Mm-hmm. I actually have a tier list which has all the tracks. So let's rank the tracks. So we can do the tracks oh, within better. a tier list. But that's I need it. to send you the... Let me just airdrop you these files quickly. Yeah. And then uh, you can just add it to the tier oh, list. Oh, that's where you text it. Okay. Let's yeah, do and this. That's, the, that's the link to the tier list. And the files, you just have to upload it to the tier list. It takes like two seconds. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Perfect. Oh, is it now? That's that's all the files there. All the other files. The, every other one is in the actual tier list maker. It's just it doesn't include these songs. It, Hang on, what's all this like importing? What's this going on here? Oh, I don't know about that. That's uh, that's your. Let me fuck this off. Okay, so 
So you just press choose files there. Oh, okay. What? Oh, Sorry, no, guys. Just doing this raw dog right here. Um, okay. You know, know what? Give me one sec. What we're going to do is we're going to pause nice. and we're going to set this up. All right. We're back. We're back. We're back. Mm-hmm. We got to yeah. fix. Beauty, beauty, beauty. Okay. So. Oh, yeah. Now I need to do a screen share. All right. Mm-hmm. So back on our tier maker shit right here. There so we basically we've got... Oh, okay. I can put it in the middle nice. because now you can see it. Do you know what uh, we should do as well? I think mm-hmm. we should relabel. We shouldn't do S tier, A tier. Let's do, let's do S tier as God tier. You can just okay. type, it, type over it. Let's do second one as solid. Pause. The one below that? Yeah, pause. You can put pause in, in brackets. <laughs> um, under that, put good, average, then soft. What about mid? Oh, yeah, do mid and then... Mid is less than good mid, and then soft. soft. Yeah. There you go. All right. There nice. Go. Good work, guys. Okay. Beauty. So, let's see mm-hmm. where we're going here. So, of these songs, mm-hmm. which we were looking at before, so these are all the different ones. So, even more than the other graphic I was just showing. Yeah. Let's just start from first to last. So, first, first was Kendrick. We need chronological like order, yeah? Well, would you say that because all of the three future ones and the weekend, all of these four are all from the same project? So any of those we could do together. Okay. Let's just start with the future. Uh, we we'll don't do like you. that. Oh, oh okay. let's do yeah, like that. Yeah, let's yeah. do like that because that was kind that of that was like the main. Even though we don't trust you was song one, it's kind of like you didn't know what we don't trust you was about. And yeah. then you heard like that, and it's like, oh, oh this is that. about Drake. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we could do we could do like that. So what do you guys think of like that? I'd say it's like I can't lie. I think I listened to it recently, yeah, and I, like, I think it's it's, it's good solid. to solid. Yeah. It's solid. Like I, I, I'm not, I, I can't even say it's bad. Like it's solid. Nosh, happy with solid. Beauty. Um, yeah, that's cool. Yep. Alrighty. Then mm-hmm. future, we don't trust you. So that was probably more on the good thing because it was less direct. It, you had to kind of know what you were talking savage, about. It wasn't savage. But it was kind of like shocking to people who, from like 2015, who were like, yeah, oh, been what a time to be alive was amazing. They'd done Life's Good. It was amazing. Like people love Drake and Future. Then all of a sudden you're hearing these things about you were my number one fan. You're sneak dissing on me. What happened? Like, like, kind of what happened to that relationship they had? And you're like, what? The, this can't be about Drake. Yeah. And then it was like, oh shit, it is about Drake. So I would say it's good because I actually think the song is actually really good. But I, it's not a savage diss. Yeah, not it's, a savage diss. I don't. Th- by the way, for the record, I don't think any of these are shit. I don't even know. <laughs> Uh, like maybe okay the only one that's going to be soft is probably j cole but we'll get to yeah, that yeah we'll get to that um okay what about the weekend the weekend was uh, it's it, kind of it's playing into the same shit though that yeah. the weekend was like what yeah like, it was kind of like and you're in a music video with them like singing like, about nicely about the shooters on tiktok yeah like, like uh I hmm I think it's a good song. Honestly, actually, that's my favorite song of the album, to be fair. I think yeah. it's a good song, and I think it's, it's quite great. funny how he's dissing OVO as a Canadian yes. who grew up. Well, well his In the career was kind of like... Parallel-ish. Yeah, 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 to like Drake and a lot of other big artists around them. So I think it's a good song. I think the bars are actually kind of savage, but... Uh, yeah. It's he singing, so it can never be that savage, you know? No. I, I don't actually know any other, unless you know any fucking singing diss tracks. But like not off the dome I can imagine maybe D'Angelo might have one but he's the only rapper I could imagine doing or he has artists one doing something like that he's really diss like shit that motherfucker is like but it's not a diss song. it's, really it's like a, a story yeah. It's, yeah yeah uh, so yeah. same with Poison Bell, Bell with DeVoe it's kind of yeah, like yeah it's like there's like people the, the, that suck but not like I hate you yeah yeah name. yeah yeah there hmm. probably would be but I would say uh, I'd say we could probably put it in at least good yeah because the song is a slapper Cool. I like, I like, he's like, I can never diss my brothers and you hear future in the background. And then he's like, you got us laughing in the Lambo. And then the yeah. next thing he says, he's like laughing. He's like, oh, what does he say? He's like, uh, you got oh. us laughing in the Lambo. Ha 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 ha. You know, I've always got your back. Something like that. It's just yeah, so which is, funny. It makes no sense. It was like, diss somebody, then have like a nice little end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it, back to it the is love hilarious. again. I don't know. We cool. We cool with good? I'm happy with good. I'm very yep. happy. Just give me a thumbs up. Love it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, beauty. Okay. ASAP. ASAP. Honestly, it's a fucking savage diss. I reckon it's going to be under solid because it's... he was not shy. He wasn't shy. He, he even ended his fucking verse with, like, he said something like, fuck keeping this shit hip hop. I want to see a fuck dude bleed out or something like that. And I'm like, Damn oh, so. like, you're like doing some gangster shit right now. Like, okay. Uh, like, rock him. Yeah. Honestly. I thought it was solid. I, lo- I love that. Yeah. 
I love how he like kicks off the verse with like verse one Metro Blue call me should have put me on the first one. That was yeah. fucking hard. That was sick. That was fucking sick. Yeah. Mm. You cool with Solo there, Nosh? Okay, beauty, beauty. Um, yes, yeah, tidy work. This delay sucks. Yeah, that's okay. The thumbs up though is immediate, so your video is perfect, but your audio is a little bit yeah. slow. So the thumbs it's, up is very helpful. It's working. <laughs> so at least do it's that still working. Yeah, for the sake of this. You're good, man. We, we're fine. All right. So then the next one probably would have been Cole. Yes, it was he that. So we oh. all know what happened. Should we look at this as put the apology away? So we look at it more from an objective, like a like, like yeah. we're, we're, we're looking at it from whether or not the diss itself yes correct. was good versus whether 100. or not the actions after the diss correct were good. I think oh, that's right. Like I, th- I think I think even with the actions, something average. I think it's like you could because it's the what he said in it. The delivery was was great. The fucking beat was fine. It was like nice. He was still. Just it was. Gonna, it's too soft. I feel like it's got to go in soft. I There's feel like no any, savage content. It was. It, was it, soft. it, it weak, can't go above weak, mid. Weak bars, and he was like saying, "You know, you're my friend, and I don't want to do this, but I'm gonna." I've been forced yeah, to okay, do it. Dude. Yeah, yeah, you're short so, and I don't like your album. That's literally that's it. Oh my god. <laughs> He literally just said that. That's so funny. Uh, so let's do. Uh, let's put that in soft then. I think we're all in, in agreement on that one, mm-hmm. Beauty. Mm-hmm. Now the one that dropped after that, I really think it I was. Think fucking, it was champagne moments. I think it officially. Re- yes, I think champagne but moments before was... Drake released his thing on DSPs. DSPs. Then um, it he, he got leaked. So I don't know. I would still say Champagne Moments got... Uh, oh, it was officially... like the same day type of shit. Yeah, I remember. Champagne Moments released immediately after Drake got leaked. So let's do... Te- Fair. Let's okay. do push up. Let's because do technically that's what we all first heard. Okay, so... And we are speaking... These categories only reference to these diss tracks. I'm not speaking of the wider world. I'm speaking of just these yes. diss tracks. I'd say it is God tier amongst these. Amongst these. Amongst these. Because I think it's... What, I still think it's better than like that. I still think it's better than show of hands. And okay. obviously, it's not good. It's not below solid. So what show of hands? Show of hands is the ASAP Rocky. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. You probably right that it is. I know it's sort of like, like I guess we have to put it aside. Like the god tier in this in this round song, you know? in this round of yeah. stuff. I'm okay with that. How I'm happy with god tier. I think it's a savage song. It's so funny. Yeah. A feel like the push-ups yeah it can go yeah, that's right yeah there's not a lot else like it was still it was it had a few moments in there and i feel like it the re- response to it was pretty sick and i enjoyed going through the the whilst it wasn't like savage savage the you know going through like the mm-hmm. lyric breakdown i was maybe cool. solid i don't know you know what we could leave it at god tier then we can determine that once yeah. we do a few more yeah. like we normally do exactly um, then the next one was Rick Ross. So I would say Rick Ross would be good. I think it's a good song. Because uh, he, he just kept saying he didn't really have a lot of distance. He didn't have a lot said, for him. He said, you're too white to say the N-word. And you had a you had surgery. That's literally kind of what he said. And kept calling him white boy. Yeah, it's kind of just like... Yeah, like... I think it's a good song, don't get me wrong, but it's kind of like... I don't think it's anywhere near the two we have in solid. There you go, that's probably that's the way it. to say it. Mm-hmm. No, she feels the same with... Uh, Old Uncle Rose. Oh, excuse me. Beauty. Yeah, that's cool. I, I wasn't a huge fan, but he responded quickly and he had a bit more savage bars than fucking the other cunts. So that was, it was all right. It was all right. Yeah, it was, uh, it was like fine. And kind of the main thing about it, it was like unnecessary. Like he had nothing to do with it. He inserted himself into this whole shit. He did not need to. He's just yeah, trying to get it. Like, he's really trying? trying to. Yeah, that was a bit yeah. weird, eh? Mm-hmm. So then the next one, the next one would, I think, was Taylor Made. Yeah, I think it was Taylor Made. I think it was Taylor Made. Because we'll probably do the Quavo Chris Brown ones in a sec. I think it's just, yeah, just two yeah, yeah. there. So the Taylor Made one, I think it's a fucking good song. I I think it's hilarious. It's definitely not savage. It's more of a. It's more of an attention thing. It's like, please just respond to me, Kendrick. Yeah. Like, I'm waiting. You got you came with me. We came at me with all this smoke, but you're not saying anything. So it's like he's trying to poke the bear. So yeah. I don't think that song that song is made to be savage. It's made no. to poke the bear. It did what it needed to do. It and did it got exactly talking. what it needed to do. It's kind of like you literally got overall coast legends. Poor taste. 
you could argue that because of the main thing was because Tupac had passed. Like, no one's mad about using Snoop's voice at all. No one no. said shit. Snoop likes it. Yeah. Snoop puts on his stories every day. <laughs> yeah, which is funny. So do we want to put it in, in good because it achieved what it needed to? Like, I don't know if it made Kendrick work faster, but it, like... It's definitely there's something to be said about him using the legend, the voice of Le- West Coast legends, to beg Kendrick to drop, because he would have heard that he would have been like, "What the fuck? Like, th- these guys I look up to." And that's why and for me, it's it. just like a weak way to approach it. Just wait, dude. I don't know if it's a weak way though. I think it's pretty genius. I think it's, I think it's hilarious. It's a good way to rattle someone. No, like. I agree with you both in different ways. I don't know. Okay. Like, I think it's good to, uh, in the... It's, it's, yeah. It's 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 like, a weird space that this track falls in. That's the problem. Because it's, it's not meant to be the savage song. It's, it's not, not like one banger. or the other. Like, it's... It's not meant to... It's not him saying, look, I have a verse from Snoop and Tupac. It's him saying, I'm going to rattle you and I'm going to poke the bear so much by using these voices that you look up to. You've looked up to since you were a kid. And now these voices are now in your head now saying to you, diss Drake. And that's what he done. That's why I think it's pur- like its purpose and it, it like fulfilled its purpose. Yeah. Let's let's leave it in good for now and we can also look yeah back. as we review it afterwards yeah. we can look back. Mm-hmm. Um oh did I zoom out? I didn't mean to do that. Hang on let me if I just click in it'll make it easier. There you go, nice. nice. Alright. Then we've got Yay's like that remix. Yes. I mean, I'd probably put it in good because it's a good song. It's like, just not savage. No, it's not savage. But he was sort of there's a couple lines about J Cole and Drake. Yeah, yeah it's some, cool. Yeah, like I feel like it's just yeah, it's more okay. cool than anything. More cool. And then we got Kendrick's mm-hmm. uh, Euphoria. If Push Ups is in God Tier, then Euphoria has to be God Tier. Yeah, I don't think there's any. It was just yeah, so fucking good. That. Question about that? Yeah. So, okay. So we'll come now. We'll finish. We'll do the Chris Brown and Quavo one. So mm-hmm. the Quavo diss? The Quavo The first one? one? I don't think I even heard this first Both one. Both of his kind of just sound like songs you'd hear in a Migos album. Gotcha. And it's not like it's somewhat savage, but From it's kind of like, it's kind of just like just normal clubby songs. Yeah. Like. He doesn't really know how to do Quavo. anything else. Uh, like, it's yeah. not like oh, anything. Yeah. Mama. Yeah, literally you hear all the same shit that he would have done in Amigos, and I'm not mad at that. It's just kind of like, if I'm comparing it to the Chris Brown one, yeah, <laughs> it's like, I'll be to take off, but they really wish it was like you instead. Shit like that. So insane. That is fucking savage. Yeah. So so then maybe we put the two Quavo ones in, in mid. mid. Yeah. And then Weakest Link has got to be God. That has to be God to just purely because that line specifically. Like, it's just so crazy. Yeah. Like, it's beyond insane, okay. that line. So then... The top three mm-hmm. stay there. That's mm-hmm. great. The next best would be like that and uh, the Show Rocky. Fans. Yeah, yeah. Good. We got Future, Weekend, Ross, Drake, Taylor, Made, and Ye's like that mm-hmm. remix. Then the two Quavo under mid and the Cole under soft. Mm-hmm. That's a solid huh. list. Yeah, I think, I think that all makes sense to me. I think that's pretty fair. Yeah, I don't know if people can disagree with that too much. Like. Yeah, take that. That's yeah, pretty happy with that. All of these songs came out this year as well. Just crazy. Yeah. In the last two months, we usually fucking <laughs> wait six years for these. For yeah. this amount of uh, shit from this these level just... of artists as well. Yeah, particularly. So it's been a, a really good time for um, yeah for beefing. That's fucking sick. Um, I'm mildly uh, aware of time because I know the train is in like about thirty minutes ish. Yeah. Oh, shit. So we'll wrap up in the next maybe five just to be safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the only other yeah. thing I had from the uh, here was Rick Ross dropped a video for Champagne Moments, which I only saw a clip of. I but saw it, clips. It just looked like he was, he sitting, was just in the car. Yeah, he was like sitting on a, a chair in front of a rich, car. Like Might have been yeah. smoking a cigar. I and mean, it's kind of like, nah, man, because I know if that was Drake, he'd be wearing a fat suit. He would do like a bunch of shit to look like Rick Ross. Yeah. And he was just doing a normal music video. Yeah. It's kind of like you wasted money. What was the point? Yeah. Which is... It's weird. Like, I, he's just, I don't know, bored. He's trying so hard to push himself and like be with involved. And it's kind of yeah. like... There's not like... Yeah. I don't, I don't know. know it's a little... He's going out a bit sad. I, I see him Especially as like him. an unfunny DJ Khaled. So yeah, it's fun. like DJ Khaled talks a lot, but he's funny. Yeah, <laughs> but like Rick Ross talks about, he's not that funny. He's kind of corny, man. Uh, 
And these are, keep in mind, Rick Ross is forty eight years old. Yeah. Drake and them are like late. Drake, I think, is like thirty eight. Kendrick's probably about the same age. Yeah. Um, Rocky might be about the same. Future's got to be like my age. He's forty, I think. Forty. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, all of these dudes are grown men. They're not twenty two. Mm-hmm. It's it's. I don't think any of them would. Th- they're all so successful that they wouldn't. We know for sure. The thing was, you think about Park and Big. Park was 25 and Big was 24 when they both passed, mm. respectively. So there was a little bit of stupidity. Things were uh, different. Mm. These people are all, Grown. you know, late 30s or fucking early 40s. Mm. Sometimes late 40s if you look at Russ. Like, they've all got too much to lose. They're not going to walk around doing anything crazy. So mm. we know that it's never going to go past this. Like, yeah, maybe there'll be a scuffle if they bump into each other in an award show or something. Yeah. But like, yeah. you know, it won't go anything further. So it is kind of, maybe they're all, I never thought of that until right now. So I wonder if like, that's why we're all maybe more excited from it. Cause it seems like there's going to be minimal consequences. Yeah. Aside from people losing friendship or always talking shit or blah, blah, sure. blah. Um, like perhaps. anyone dying from this doesn't even cross my mind. Like, yeah, it's not even like a thing. But it's just, I, I like the fact they uh, like each other. Soft battles. Look, it's hella yeah, soft it battles. It should be like this though, because you shouldn't be killing people over rat beef. Silly. Yeah, it is silly, but you know, look at Chicago, right? These dudes, man, dude, you know, King they're Von and crazy. FGB, BG Duck, or whatever. Then, I mean, they're, they're not okay. Yeah, they're not okay. They've no. been fucking grown up in some crazy mm-hmm. ass shit. Mm-hmm. So I guess that kind of makes it a little funner up. Um, for fun to enjoy that but um yeah so then okay we'll wrap we'll bring it home with this so now that kendrick has responded i guess first question is two-part question will drake respond Mm -hmm. and if so when will he respond uh hmm. you guys reckon he has to he's gonna be no longer than a week i actually 100 percent agree with that i give him seven days because i was saying to dan today I want to hear what you think, but I was, I reckon that like, I don't love the fast thing of it. Like the, the pressure to like release something, no. because if you think about like, particularly euphoria, there's a new song. What's that? Three beat switches. Yeah. Um, fucking all, you know, the flows and getting all the sort of, you know, putting together that level of information and presenting it like that and recording it and mixing and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. It's a. Uh, it takes time to make something that good, you know. That's what I'm saying. That's the thing. And if you want a quality response, it needs a bit of time. Now, unfortunately, yeah. because with the the 24 hour news cycle, like it never ends, mm-hmm. people are always waiting for that next thing. So that's why they expect these really quick responses. But you look mm-hmm. at Russ, which was pretty lazy and boring. So mm-hmm. it was like. It's kind of like at the same time as well. It kind of ruins it in a sense because it's like I always have that expectation they should always be quicker. But it's kind of like even when I look on Reddit and shit, everyone's like, "Oh, this is done now. They haven't said anything in this amount of time. It's done." When it shouldn't really be like that. It should just be like let them respond in their own time. But now there is this misconception where it's like you have to do it, otherwise things just start to die down. And mm. it shouldn't necessarily have to die down, but it's the pressure Goldfish. and what we are saying is like putting that out there. And it's kind of like if we don't even have the expectation of them being quick, it's kind of like we wouldn't we wouldn't have even thought Kendrick wouldn't respond. You know, it's kind of like we would have just been like, yeah, he's cut. He, he'll if make this something. part, if we do this part, we did it a day later this week. Oh, yeah. we would have said fuck Kendrick and been like, you know what? like this guy's not even gonna respond. He's shit. Like he's shook. Like mm. but now, I said, to, I think I said to you guys in the text, if Kendrick doesn't respond by Sunday, it's over. Yeah. And yeah. he responded on I've Tuesday. I've seen so many Reddit posts like that as well. Just like, he's killed it. And those people are like, this rap beef is dead. And you know why? Kendrick. Shit like that. And they're all blaming him. Now everyone's on the dick. I'm, I would say, okay, I would also be curious. Okay, so do we answer that first question? So Notion said he will in a week. In, I, that's yes. what I said to Dan today. And you agree? I think so too. It's, it's too savage. Not if he respond. does it in like 48 hours, I'd mm-hmm. be the only explanation is that he had something he had basically something, yeah. ready. And then this morning he's like, clear my schedule. <laughs> I'm yeah, fucking, you know point. what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, he's like writing all day. He's putting together the rebuttals. Yeah. I was explaining to Dan, like battle rap shit. Like you, you know, you look at all the points, you'd be like, all right, I'm going to say this to that. Cause you know, like refer back to that in this clever way and boom, boom, boom. Uh, maybe he preempted some of the things he was going to say. Mm. Not going to be a good father. Mention Pusha T. Mm. Like, these different things. You know, fucking underage girls. Mm-hmm. Um, blah, blah, blah. So he's going to come back in and try and, like, turn that around. So he might already have those things ready. If he's smart, he would have. And I think that he's not going to back down. Mm. 
because this wasn't like push a T level savage, which like exposed something pretty serious. Like that no, is like that is beyond savage. I That's think he like, put out an iOS press release. Like I don't no. think he like like it was. Only, I didn't even know, but like that was the only time people knew about Drake's child. Like, and I didn't know that. I didn't know, like, Pusha T was the reason why people know about his child. Yeah. Like, he literally, like, no one, the fact no one knew, and now all of a sudden, there's, like, spec- like what did Pusha T just say? Like, he has a what? Insane. Like, yeah. that is insane. And then he had to yeah. mention it, right? That's, so, I mean, yeah. that, that shows that he, he backed down, of it, and, you know, Jay Prince saying, oh, Drake had something, but I wouldn't let him put it out, because it would cause too much, you know, the, the ramifications would be crazy. Mm. I'm like, uh, I don't know, think anyone really believes that. Yeah. So that's gonna be cap, dude. Yeah, I agree. So they say that, like, I would say that. Ken, like, hang on, what, what? We, I lost my train of thought. Kendrick, I'm distracted. Uh, Kendrick's verse. Uh, uh, oh yeah, it wasn't like it had a lot of jabs in it, and it was great. But all of these jabs are like stomach punches. I feel like. You yeah. know how like you can wear a dude down pause by like constant yeah. body shots like and UFC, all of... you kick their shins, right? Kick yeah, the shins, yeah, yeah. liver, Mayweather, yeah. Mayweather chip stuff, away. chip away. Don't you know? Maybe a little Josh, a little jab mm. in the jaw, like boom, like you know, all you're doing is boom, gut, and all of a sudden oh, they're like fucking their whole body mm-hmm. is sore, and they're not even really able to fight back. Mm-hmm. So that to me is what this felt like, and they've probably got more. Maybe they've got like real stories that they could tell, as like. Yeah, like real. They're ammo. not gonna unload the whole clip immediately. No, because then, exactly. Then it's over. There's nothing else left. So then they have to make it last in case, but make it feel like we we're, we're being satiated mm. by this whilst holding something back for later. So mm. it's super interesting. It feels yeah. like they'll, you know, Kendrick sounds like he has more. Is like, don't make me keep going. Like, okay, yeah. and Drake in the last one said, don't make me keep going. So mm-hmm. all right, you're both saying it. They both definitely got some more. I do think Kendrick's was probably the most savage out of everything Correct. so far, though. It yeah. was the stuff he said yeah. is past the line that Drake took it for yeah. sure. Yeah, that mentioning his kid is always a sensitive subject. Saying he's not black enough is a sensitive subject. Yeah, like a lot of this shit is kind of like Drake didn't go this far. Drake said he revealed some things that people didn't know about, like the fifty percent, like of the publishing. If that's true, uh, if that's true, there's a lot of speculation within what he said, but it wasn't this savage. Granted, both tunes do slap. Push ups is still amazing, but uh, yeah, the, I think the next the next round definitely needs to be like crazy shit, something yeah. crazy. I also am always like con- trying to be conscious of recency bias, meaning that is true. Saying. That is true. I think uh, there's a lot of recency bias right now. If you right now we're like, yo, Kendrick did Drake got eliminated. Ah, uh, like you know, yeah. like all of that. Like it's fun to say all that stuff, mm-hmm. but like you, I, I think. To be real fair, since we this is the first time I think this has happened since we've had the pod. I don't know if there's been a major battle that we've cared about in the last four Lots, years. Like, I don't think COVID, so. COVID, nothing happened during then, so no. So, Minor things, not like this. So not I can like recall. this, back and forth like this. No. Yeah, no. So, uh, yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. It's going it's to be fun. curious. So, I mean, hopefully by next week we'll have something else mm-hmm. to fucking break down lyrically, uh, folks. So, um with that, we probably should wrap this up mm-hmm. so we can jump into whip. But um, let's. Uh, yeah. Anything else we want to add in right a second before we go? Are we good? Euphoria is amazing. That's all I have to say. Yeah. It's fucking fire. Yeah. Team Drake, though. But yeah, that's fucking fire. Yeah, you, you get it. Pick a side and stay there, as I said. Stay yeah. Um, episode 161, by the way. Bless mm-hmm. you, Notion, of uh, Bad Habits Podcast. And uh, <laughs> let's. Let's do our, uh, our wrap up. Mm-hmm. Daniel, where they find you, mate? Uh, HFGXMING, Twitch, and uh, Ball Nolly Sports on Instagram and YouTube. And oh. yeah. Beauty. Nosh. <laughs> At Notion Baby on Instagram for your beats and everything. Notion MTB on YouTube and Instagram for mountain bikes. Get a dog up, yeah. Get a dog. C W F O R, Instagram and Twitter. Guys, thanks for watching and listening. If you enjoyed the episode, Smash thumbs up, hit subscribe below, hit the notification bell so you know when the new drops. It's Bing. coming. There you there go. go. Uh, follow us everywhere at the Movement Fam and at Bad Habits Pod on Instagram. Uh, Spotify now has the videos. Give us some five stars for those videos. And uh, we'll see you fucking legends next week. Get a dog up, yeah. Peace.